Hey, Badger Buddies! From opportunistic feeders to blood-sucking critters, here are 10 animals that live off of humans. Number four will literally make your skin crawl. Number 10, vampire bats. People don't realize, but bats are adorable. Look at that little puffer. He just wants a banana. The main reason that bats have a bad reputation is due to several bat species that feed exclusively on blood and thus have earned the common name of vampire bats. Vampire bats typically hunt under the cover of darkness, looking for a warm body to stick their fangs in and suck out all of that sweet animal juice. Their victims include birds, mammals, and even humans are on the menu. There have been cases of people contracting rabies from vampire bat attacks. Once suitable prey has been identified, the bat will land on its victim and use infrared radiation to detect a warm spot on their body. Then it will use its cheek teeth to shave off any hair prior to sinking in its incisors. Anticoagulants in its saliva prevent blood clotting near the wound and ensure a steady flow of red nectar for the bat to feast on. Number nine. While some creatures are content with attacking the surface of our skin, others thrive inside our body. Such is the case for two hookworm species, Nicator americanus and Ancylostoma duodenali. Their eggs are passed in the feces of infected people and mature into larvae that are capable of burrowing into human skin. Walking barefoot on contaminated soil is the most common way of contracting a hookworm infection. Larva and adult hookworms settle in the small intestine where they start to rely on the human body for nutrition. Externally, symptoms may appear at the burrowing site in the form of an itchy rash. Symptoms of a hookworm infection may include loss of appetite, weight loss, abdominal pain, fatigue, or anemia. It can also affect the physical and mental development of young children. Number eight, raccoons. These masked bandits have not only adapted to living in urban environments, but they're actually thriving in them. Raccoons are actually very intelligent animals with extremely dexterous front paws and a well-developed sense of touch. They have a proven ability of opening complex locks and a learning speed on par with that of the rhesus monkeys. They're native to North America, where they're becoming increasingly dependent on humans for sustenance. They typically target garbage and home gardens, but are known to eat just about anything they can get their thieving little paws on. They're natural scavengers, so it isn't really surprising that they've adapted so well to living off of humans. In fact, studies have found that urban raccoons have developed more complex skills than those of their country-dwelling counterparts. Pop quiz, hotshot! What is the urban raccoon's favorite food? See if you can guess the correct answer in the comments below, and we'll let you know later on in the video if you're right. Number seven, uh, mice. We've become so accustomed to the presence of mice in human settlements that the best known member of the species is known as the house mouse. There's also a domestic version of this creature, which is commonly referred to as the fancy mouse. The difference being that one is treated like a pet and the other is treated like a pest. The wild house mouse is the most common rodent to infest human buildings and it typically consumes leftovers or unattended food. To file down and control the length of their growing teeth, mice are constantly gnawing on materials. This threatens furniture, wiring, textiles, and even a building's supporting structure. It's a combination of factors that has gotten so many people rooting for Tom rather than Jerry in the classical cartoon confrontation. Number six. Head lice are external parasites that spend their entire lives on the human scalp. Aside from looking terrifying under a microscope, head lice aren't very dangerous and are generally more of a cosmetic problem than a health threat. This tiny transient only feeds on the blood of the human scalp. As gruesome as that might sound, it's actually the good guy of the louse family. In fact, oddly enough, head lice infestations may have a positive effect in improving the immune system response against the body louse, which is much more dangerous. It's like the head louse's evil twin, indistinguishable in appearance, but a known carrier of trench fever, relapsing fever, and epidemic typhus. Number five. Picture this, you're lying in a bed at night, about to drift off to sleep 
and suddenly you hear an agonizing, high-pitched buzzing cry. It's not the beginning of a horror movie, but a typical encounter with one of nature's most detestable creatures, the mosquito! Females of the species pierce through the skin of their host by using a tube-like mouth part called a proboscis. They extract blood, which is vital for their egg production because it contains iron and proteins. The loss of blood doesn't affect humans in a significant manner, and the bite is usually followed by an itchy bump caused by the mosquito's saliva. Nevertheless, mosquitoes are the deadliest creatures on Earth, unrivaled by any predator. That's because they're a vector for the transmission of numerous diseases, including malaria, yellow fever, Zika virus, and many others. Number four, don't let the bed bugs bite. It's great advice, but stopping them can be quite the challenge. They spread easily by dwelling in our clothes or personal items and may survive up to a year without food. Getting rid of bed bugs typically involves a combination of frequent vacuuming, heating a room over 122 degrees Fahrenheit, washing clothes at high temperatures, and using several types of pesticides. These tiny nightmares survive by feeding on human blood, typically at nighttime, and they have been known human parasites since ancient times. Their bites cause rashes and itching, but they aren't known to carry any diseases. The damage is more psychological in nature. Chronic bed bug attacks can lead to stress, anxiety, and even insomnia. In case you're not already filled with hatred for these little demons, here's an extra dash of horrible. When they mate, the male literally stabs the female with his proboscis. It's horrific. Ugh, next animal. Number three. It's worth mentioning that the rat is not a scientific term, and the term may be commonly used to describe other large members of the rodent superfamily. True rats belong to the rattus genre, which includes the black rat and the brown rat. Their reputation is much worse than that of their mice relatives, and they are often seen as the apex of the planet's invasive species. As soon as humans took to the sea, rats began to spread across the planet as stowaways on seagoing vessels. Their omnivorous diet has an incredibly wide range, and they reproduce in great numbers. This means that they can quickly take over a natural area, especially on an island. They do this by consuming the eggs and the young of other creatures. By some calculations, rats have been responsible for anywhere from 40 to 60% of all reptile and seabird extinctions. They're known carriers of at least a dozen diseases, and in medieval times, rats were partially responsible for the spreading of the bubonic plague. While they're usually described as the main villains, they're actually just a component of a larger chain of culprits. The rats carried fleas from Asia, which in turn carried a microorganism called Yersinia pestis, which was responsible for the plague. Nowadays, rats wreak havoc on many urban areas with infestations occurring near garbage cans, behind walls, and around pipes. Their skill sets include, among others, teeth that gnaw through most materials and flexible bodies that can crawl through most spaces. They also have the ability of swimming up sewer pipes in toilets, just in case you thought there were any safe spaces left. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell button to get notified of new videos, and we always appreciate a big thumbs up. Number two. Do you like thin, worm-shaped, short-legged mites? Yes? Good! There's a high chance that Demodox folliculorum is already living on your skin. And in great numbers. These microscopic mites have adapted to living inside of human hair follicles, especially on the human face. They feed on sebum, an oily or waxy matter secreted by the skin. Its entire life cycle takes about two weeks and its existence is entirely dependent on human skin. They generally travel at night and may cover up to 0.63 inches in one hour. They might be harmless, but it's still a bit unsettling to know that as you're sleeping, there's a raging mite party taking place on your face. It's answer time. So what's the urban raccoon's favorite food? When it's not busy guarding the galaxy, this creature absolutely adores pet food. This can sometimes become a source of conflict between household animals and the opportunistic feeder. 
That's why it's not recommended to leave pet food out in an area known to have a presence of raccoons. Number one. Ticks are part of the same animal family as spiders and scorpions. That should be enough to tell you that they're not to be trifled with. While other arachnids pack a venomous punch, ticks are known carriers of several diseases, including Lyme disease and typhus. Ticks have pear-shaped bodies that become engorged as they feed on the blood of other animals, including humans. During this process, they may transmit the various bacteria, viruses, and protozoa that they carry. Some tick-transmitted viruses are so dangerous that they require biosafety level 4, the highest level of precaution in the U.S. It comes with a full hazmat dress code. That doesn't mean that lights start flashing and alarms start ringing every time a tick bites someone, because most bites don't lead to infection, particularly if the tick is removed within 36 hours. This can be done using fine tip tweezers in the same manner as you'd remove a splinter. 